So let's see, let's hope it works. Baby, 540k. Hey yo guys, what up, Viper here again, and well, honestly, I first of all want to apologize a little bit for the lack of content, especially on the Genshin YouTube. Um, I don't know, kind of like Xiao wasn't really my character, Kitchen Banner, and wasn't really mine either, and I don't know, I had a lot of other stuff on my mind, a lot of stuff regarding uh, Hearthstone, and also figuring out our things for stream, and so on and so on, but I'm back, and I do want to make especially a lot of content about Hu Tao, because, well, my first impressions, as you guys might have guessed, I, I love Hu Tao. She, she is super, super fun to play. She's like smooth and like nice to play. No mechanically annoying things. No like, I don't know. You, get, you guys probably know what I mean, right? If a character just feels good to play, if it just like feels smooth, feels easy to use, doesn't have like annoying mechanics to, I don't know, always have the back of your mind, have to recognize. And if you mess something up, like press the wrong button, dash the wrong rail, those kind of things. Now it's just, it's like a really, really good to play character, really, really fun to use character. And well, after all of that, she happens to be really, really good. It's kind of the same with Ganyu, right? Um, it's like characters that everyone is like waiting for because they look cool, they look fun, and then they also happen to be super, super strong. And I don't know why Mihoyo is doing this. I mean, I kind of, we kind of could have expected beforehand, I guess. A little bit, maybe not, maybe yes, but no, she's just super, super cool. And I want to talk a little bit about her, why I like her, what's like about her kit, and... Yeah, I don't know. My, my my first thoughts, like I said, is just she's really, really nice. Now, the thing that surprised me the most is how good she is as a carry. Like as a like she use auto attacks, charge attacks kind of carry. Because I kind of expected Hu Tao to be I'm gonna apply cryo, switch Hu Tao, press EQ, big damage, switch off her, and then I'll, I don't know, continue fighting with I don't know, Child, Ganyu, my current kind of main's probably gonna be more of a Ganyu Tao combo now. I'll, I'll have to figure team comps out, which I think is the most difficult thing. By the way, and a lot of things I mentioned, like first thoughts, impressions, this intro kind of part, I'll get into it way, way deeper throughout the video. So feel free to click on the part of the video that, I don't know, you want to click it if it's like weapon artifacts, team comps, I don't know, general like gameplay explanation, something like that. Feel free to click on that. But yeah, I want to give the brief overview of what I want to cover, which again, like <laughs> kind of are all the things I've already named. And well, the gameplay thing, even though it's like super smooth and easy and cool gameplay, I feel like team comp building is a little bit weird, which I'm not super, super certain about everything yet because it's one day of playing. And I think it's similar to Ganyu. I feel like there's more work to be done than we kind of initially think about, right? Because especially this whole carry potential of charge attacks being so, so strong and doing so, so much damage in combination with uh, freeze and like with Sing Shu and probably also freeze character. So you rather melt than vaporize, but obviously just vaporizing everything is strong, melting is better. So a lot of input, a lot of stuff. I'll probably get more into detail uh, partially later into the video and partially in future videos. So now. Let's just start looking a little bit at our girl Hu Tao here. What is my Hu Tao looking like? Um, what am I What am I doing? What, are, what do I suggest everybody else to be doing regarding weapons, artifacts, constellations, talents, and so on and so on. So, well, weapons, I happen to do have a R1 Staff of Homer, level 90, only R1. Uh, oh, I, don't know, I kind of told myself I will go for R5 if I really, really like Hu Tao. Now, after one day, I'm already kind of at the point of I want to go for R5 Staff of Homer because uh, I, don't know, I feel like she's a great character and she's a lot of fun to play. So, going further into this, I want to like disclaimer I really, really like playing Hu Tao. So, compared to Gan Yuok Shao, I kind of skip C0 testing, I kind of skip C0 playing. I just wanted to have fun, wanted to. Uh, play her to her fullest so I already did put all the constellations I got on her on this you guys can watch the pull video by the way that's already uploaded should be the video before this one and honestly a lot of crazy stuff a lot of cool stuff happened I I don't know like that was the 
the kind of like craziest and kind of coolest pulls video I've ever like looked at, ever done. Not like video, but just like the most fun and hype pulls I've done in this game so far. It's, I don't know, a lot of stuff happened. A lot of cool stuff happened, but you guys can check that out. Regardless of constellations, uh, why did I want to put all the constellations on, even though I want to talk about her in this way? Um, the constellations don't impact gameplay much. It's like more or less damage buff constellations, right? This one is kind of gameplay impacting because it makes charge attacks not consume stamina, which obviously is very, very strong because spamming charge attacks is a powerful carry build that she has, which I personally didn't expect, so I kind of didn't think too much about this. But yeah, this is a little bit gameplay relevant, but... Oh, it's a little bit relevant, right? So I'm kind of sorry about this. My charge attack build testing will be a bit off due to actually just having the constellations. Now this, well, we increase the blood bloom damage by an amount equal to 10% of her HP. We can like read through all of these, but essentially we do more damage. We do more damage. Uh, we give our teammates crit rate actually if we kill someone that's affected by a blood bloom, a blood blossom, sorry. So it's like, again, more damage, but for our teammates, more damage and well if we fall below 25 percent or would die we don't actually die and we get a, our, our crit rate buff by 100 percent and some resistance buffs now the crit rate buff to 100 percent is kind of cool to know because you can be below 25 percent and then this triggers and then you have a one minute cooldown and then it doesn't instantly trigger it triggers the next time your hp changes so the next time you hit your e for example it reduces your hp it will activate and then you have the crit rate buff so you could be stacking infinite crit damage for some cool clips in open world more or less rather than in abyss to be honest not that applicable in abyss but very very nice cool fun clips for open world now probably talked about talents and you guys were confused what's he talking about if you guys didn't check her out yet well we have essentially just the normal polon charge attacks six hits and charge attack and the low stamina cost that's why i think that putting constellation on like putting CR, C1 on doesn't make her, enable her to be a carry. She can be before that. It's definitely good. Very, very low stamina cost here. Definitely works out. Now, her E ability. Well, this is a lot of text for not that much, to be honest. Well, you press E, you gain an attack bonus that is based uh, on your max HP. Your attacks do pyro damage. And your charge attacks apply a blood blossom. Now, what does Blood Blossom do? Enemies affected by Blood Blossom will take Pyro damage every 4 seconds. Oh, they take damage. It's considered elemental skill damage. And the state of your E, which is similar to like a child E, will just end once either the timer runs out, it has a cooldown, it has a duration, or you swap off. So you, it's like a Razor Q, right? So you swap off, swap back, ability is gone. Now, how does the ability look like? CD 16 seconds duration, only 9 seconds. So, if you want to be Hu Tao carry, you have to like re, uh, do 7 seconds of other things with your teammates in between this. Blood Blossom duration is relatively long. The damage is 128%, which is okay. Decent damage will mostly be vaporized or melted. So, it's going to be a kind of big hit anyways. And the attack increase 6.8% at level 12. So, this is already a relatively high... <clears throat> is already a relatively high level for the ability what does this for example mean for me to put it a little bit into numbers you can check this out i have 30,000 hp let's round this up and we get close to seven percent by the talent 6.8 percent right so it's about 2,000 attack you get 2,000 attack kind of big number right most characters only have 2,000 attacks so this is uh, huge now her Q, I've already crowned. I've already crowned her, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's that's how much I actually enjoyed playing her day one. But Q is just a big damage ability, and you do more damage if you are low HP. So the 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 fifty percent is the break point. If you're below fifty percent, that's seven six percent max current level thirteen, right? Ten plus the constellation level, and it heals you for a little bit. Also, depending on how many enemies you hit. Um, I feel like this is a really, really nice thing, especially in open world. I can kind of just like be low life, press E, press Q, kill people, uh, kill some hilly shirts and stuff, and 
have decent HP again, and then press E again, probably put me below 50% again, and have the big damage hit again. It's 15 second cooldown, low cooldown, and low energy cost. I kind of usually don't run into issues with energy recharge, don't really feel like I want to build much on her. Then we have this, Paramecia Papilo state, which is like while you're in E, that is uh, the auto attack kind of state. After it ends, um, everyone in your party gets 12% crit rate. That's a very, very nice passive, very, very strong, a lot of free stats. And while she's below 50%, you get, 50, you get pyro damage bonus increased by 33%. So you do gain a lot more extra damage while being below 50%. You want to try to aim to be below 50%. Now, the interesting thing to note here, you have to pay 30% of your current HP as activation cost for your E. That means you press it the first time, you go down to 70%. You press it the second time, you go down to 49%, right? And well, so after the second E, you will be below 50% and all your bonuses will be active. Especially looking at Staff of Homer, also more bonus while being below 50%, kind of tailor-made a weapon for her. Now let's look a little bit at artifacts for... Uh, for Hu Tao now. The artifact intake is gonna be a lot in short time, but uh, I don't want to keep this like too long because I kind of feel like talking a lot about the other stuff already. The set bonus options you have are a four set Crimson Witch of Flames is a very very good set bonus. Why? Because you increase overload and burning damage by 40%. No, <laughs> that's not the important part. You increase vaporize and mad damage by 15%, and using elemental skill will increase your two-piece bonus again, right? Now you can't easily stack that as if with a Diluc, for example, but the four-piece bonus because increased vaporize and melt, and every kind of team you want to be playing around is gonna be oriented around vaporize and melt. Those are the reactions you wanna be using here. Well, just really, really powerful four set bonus. Now, if you don't happen to have a four set crimson witch of flames which for example I don't have, <laughs> you have to go for two set bonuses, right? Now two set bonuses, um, generally speaking, Gladiator is the usual just second two set that a lot of people want to run and probably have. Gladiator is kind of awkward because her base attack is incredibly low and her E skill gives her incredibly high amounts of attack already, so further attack is not going to increase your damage by a whole lot. It is going to be better to opt for two-piece Wanderers or two-piece Noblesse because... Well, Wanderers gives you Elemental Mastery, which is kind of very, very similar to what this does. Increases made Vaporized damage by 15%, or you just increase your Elemental Mastery with the Wanderers pieces. Well, it's relatively similar, this being slightly better if you have equally strong artifacts. Don't overvalue your set bonus. That is very, very important, and people kind of screw it up most of the time. Right, the important thing is to have the right main stat on your artifacts. Might this stat, the main stat. Right? And that one is very, very relevant. And then you want to have good subsets on them. And then you want to care about your set bonus. Because a set bonus in the end literally never outperforms the good stats you have, right? And that is the important thing here. Now, two-piece noblesse, obviously the other good two-set bonus. If you don't happen to have the wanderers pieces or if your noblesse pieces are better than the wanderers pieces, go for those. Right? You can also go wanderers and noblesse. You can just skip Witcher Flames, right? Just use any of those two-set bonuses that you have happen to have good artifacts for which is, uh, yeah, the relevant, very, very relevant thing here. For example, I'm using these because, I don't know, I kind of have some really, really sick pieces. And the very, very important thing to note here, HP% percent on Sands is the better offensive stat for her due to the E ability that increases your attack based on your max HP. So the Sands, you want to go HP%, percent, Goblet, Pyro Damage, Goblet, and Headpiece. You kind of just want to go Crit Rate or Crit Damage, whichever fits out uh, the subsets of your other artifacts. I think realistically speaking, her personal subset is already crit damage, right? So she has more crit damage. And it's kind of be difficult to equalize a crit damage headpiece, her personal subset with crit damage. And well, the game starts at 5% crit rate and 50% crit damage, right? So most of the time you will have to go for the crit rate circlet. You want to keep the one to two ratio crit rate to crit damage ratio. And if you're subset artifacts all of these have happened to have like a lot of crit rate sure go for crit damage headpiece but that's going to be very much your choice right crit rate crit damage for example for me all of my pieces happen to have a lot of crit damage and not that much crit rate so i definitely have to go for crit rate headpiece and it's even my offset piece because it has kind of six stats so i want to go for this now looking at weapons in general um i honestly 
for weapons, it is kind of the same thing, right? We have this tailor-made five-star weapon, just the tailor-made five-star polon that we want to be using on her because Mihoyo just thinks like, hey, increased HP and the 50% mechanic, bam, right? That's what you want to have. Now, if, you, if you're not away and you don't have Stavathoma, then other five-star... Okay, let's not talk about other five-stars. <laughs> let's just talk about some four-star polearms. Now, first of all, Deathmatch, the Battle Pass polearm, is a very, very good polearm. Can definitely use that very strong. Then you have something like Lithic Spear, which, especially at higher refinements, is also super, super powerful. The current weapon banner is probably one of the best weapon banners for low-to-play players, for like... Um, maybe even free-to-play players, because Lithic Spear and the Lithic Claymore are really, really good, and both with Gravestone and Staff of Home are also really, really good. So the current weapon banner is probably one where you can actually opt to go for it, even if you're like low-to-play or free-to-play. Something like Dragon Spain, also very interesting, because the low base attack doesn't really matter too much for Hotel, since attack percent is not something you really want on your artifacts. Happening that HP percent literally gives you more damage, more attack bonus than attack percent. Therefore, low base attack on Dragon Spin as a downside doesn't matter too much. Elemental Mastery definitely very, very useful and good stat. And if we want to be playing Sing Show together with her and be utilizing her as a carry, then, well, the enemy is going to be affected by Hydro or Pyro, so this is going to be powerful. Meaning, if your team comp is Sing Show and Sing Show and Hutao, then Dragon Spain, really, really good choice as well. And, well, that kind of leaves us with the Polon choices, right? So those are the ones you want to opt for, but in general, just use what you want to use. But something like White Tassel, for example, a three-star Polon, definitely very viable. I kind of don't want to scroll through this. Okay, I, don't, I might not even have a White Tassel, to be honest. But yeah, White Tassel, for example, the best restart polearm can definitely go for that. But besides that, Battle Pass weapon, Lithic weapon, Dragon Spain, maybe even even Favonius Lance, you don't really need the energy recharge, but decent weapon, right? Then again, you want to aim for Elemental Mastery or Crit Rate or Crit Damage substat on the weapon. Attack percent, not so good. Energy recharge, maybe even better than attack percent. Attack percent, really, really bad. And that kind of like leaves us uh, with my like first I don't know, first kind of intel that I want to give you guys it's been kind of a long video but yeah I don't know anyway, I hope uh, I hope I kind of ended up covering most things and here we see this thing show damage right we kind of see the the sick vaporized damage that she offers us and ha, let's uh look at one this is this is the big thing for me by the way what I like so so much about her is that I can simply apply cryo and then not crit. <laughs> no, but I can simply apply cryo and then if this crits, it does more than 200,000 damage. So it's just like big, big hit with very little setup. And that's what I, I personally value a lot in characters that they don't need a lot of setup. I don't need to like switch this, do this ability, set this up and then switch this and do this and those and this whatever no i just i just apply cryo press e press q and bam big hit right what was the six hundred eighty thousand? uh we have 274 percent crit damage i know i should have more crit rate but i just don't have artifacts for it i'm sorry so it's almost three times the damage you've seen um oh no, sorry almost four times the damage it's plus uh, 274 percent of the number we saw there which is about 170,000 plus the close to 70,000 you've already seen, so it does like 230k. With like no setup, just like any kind of character applies cryo, no bandit, no extra damage buff, just bam. And yeah, that's what I value, value a lot, and that's why, big, big part why I like her so much. And I think this kind of concludes my first impressions, first thoughts about this. I hope it was helpful. I hope, yeah. I hope any of you guys are now like, I want to pull Hutao, I, I got to know something more, or you guys are like, oh, I want to wait a little bit for it. I'm going to be making gameplay videos about team comps and things like that very, very soon. Right now, well, Sync Show for vaporizing all her, for her attacks, very, very good. Combining that with a Cryo, so you can actually med, also very, very good. That's kind of how far I have been gone with team comps. I feel like going for two Cryo, Ganyu, Diona plus Sync Show is my personal preference at the moment. 
You can definitely swap off Diona or Ganyu for other characters. If you don't have Ganyu, Kea is gonna be doing just as fine, to be honest, almost all the time. So this is kind of where I'm at, and I think the whole gameplay and team comp kind of stuff I wanna leave for a different video. So like like Utah just said, Sayonara and Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope I can see you guys soon again. Usual shout out to everyone that leaves a comment, leaves a like, lets me know what you guys want to see. Always helpful and see you in the next one.